This is the CMO of GaiaX, Vasily Orfano. This is our newest podcast series. GaiaX is a newly aspiring, rising European association, and together with you, we can develop a new concept of data infrastructure ecosystem based on the values of openness, transparency, sovereignty, and interoperability. Join us today at GaiaX and be part of this technological ecosystem. This is the uh, CEO Gaia X podcast series with uh, Francesco Bonfilio. Francesco, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Vasilia. I'm good. Thank you for <laughs> having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and availability. Francesco, you've been one of the most uh, fervent believers of Gaia X. Uh, it's been 1.5 years since you, you joined the initiative. Is that correct? Yeah, one pa- yeah, one point five is an interesting. Is, is yeah. exactly. <laughs> I joined in March. I joined. I joined in March twenty one. Yes. Okay. So roughly and, speaking, yes. And and this has a, a, entailed a, a lot of challenges and a lot of opportunities because it's uh, you've taken something basically from uh, uh, scratch. Uh, we we would like to have this opportunity to discuss a little bit further, but I would like to 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 take it a little bit. A step further from from where you you, you began. What, what is the um, what was the interest? What what actually sparked your interest in joining Guy X? And what is your background? I would like our audience to 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 understand a little bit more about you. Well, my background is uh, of course in technology. I, I've been spending all my life in in different roles in different companies. Uh, most of my time, I would say. More than a half of my professional life uh, has been in international roles um, for large companies, but I've also uh, been engaged with uh, Italian ones because I am Italian, and uh, as well in the in the world of startups and uh, and the small uh, companies that now constitute the, the the new edge of innovation. But to go back, my my background starts a long time ago. I've been in the business for more than thirty five years. Unfortunately, it's a long time, and um, my my background is uh, in electronic engineering, and uh, that's all I have done uh, at the beginning of my career, starting from hardware, and um, and going through the evolution of technology from uh, analog uh, electronic to digital electronic uh, design, microprocessors, and um, and and then I, I ran into, or I should say I smashed my face into software because at that time software was not exactly what we know today. It was basically programming microprocessors. So my career was really uh, bottom up from the beginning of technology and the beginning of software engineering as we know it today. I had also the the, the the opportunity and I was honored to work for one of the most influential companies in the globe uh, that define how software engineering works, which was rational software and then became part of the, the, the larger IBM. And without going through my CV, I spent my life in the business side of the world and uh, trying to transform the way people do business through technology. And um, to make a long story short, uh, when I joined GaiaX, it was at the end of 2020, when uh, everybody knows we were, you know, out of a very difficult period of time uh, due to the pandemic and all the changes that this crisis introduced. And uh, I, I had this opportunity to, to have an interview for the selection of the CEO. And interestingly enough, uh, at that time, nobody really understood what GAIAX was. I should say nobody had a clue. And uh, I was talking to my colleagues in the business and everybody was you know, scratching their head and say, yes, we heard about this initiative. Apparently, this is a kind of new cloud that Germany wants to build, but possibly it's going to be, become a Franco-German. Maybe we want to build, they want to build um, something to beat the American. And everybody had, had their own view of what GAIAX was or was supposed to do. And that's the spirit. I joined the interviews and... Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, when I joined, I said, look, I've been talking to many colleagues and friends and professionals, and everybody was asking what GAIAX is or is going to do. This is my view. And uh, my, my basically, my interview was, this, this is what I believe GAIAX should do in Europe 
for Europe and beyond. This is what we need. This is what we miss. And uh, these are the key pillars of what we should uh, develop. Uh, and that will be my commitment if I join Gaiax. And, and that's where I am. So basically, I brought in my ideas, my plan, my five years plan was presented during my interview and still uh, it is in place. And that's what we are what we are doing. So we are walking the line of the plan I, I introduced during my interview. You asked me a question, Vasilia, that's important. Why? And uh, I think that, like I said briefly, we need GAIAX, regardless of the name and regardless of me, regardless of the association. We need to do what GAIAX is doing because this is going to change the relationship between the human being and the technology in an era where everybody, I think by now, after the pandemic, after the Ukraine war, everybody has realized how much our life uh, depends on technology. So we need it. That's why I joined. Uh, Francesco, you are talking, you have been talking about your views of the world and how this solution has been I guess, integrated as as part of your value system, as Francesco, as a person first, then as a professional. So if I take it from that perspective, uh, seeing on one hand side, who is Francesco as as a personality, but also as a professional, what is the key solution that Gaia-X provides? And how does this coincide with your view of the world? Because I understand that at this point of your life as a CEO, you would not just pick up any initiative. You took this initiative because it, it, it felt like a good solution to take up. But do explain this a little bit further to me. Yeah, you, you touched upon two uh, key areas. One is the professional area and the other is the personal area or uh, should I say the, the ethical uh, area. And in terms of ethics, I, I believe GAIAX introduces first in Europe uh, a new concept of data ethics. And uh, people still don't understand fully what data ethics means. But if we talk about the ethics of money, the ethics of economy, the ethics of uh, you know a social ecosystem like healthcare, everybody understands what ethic uh, ethics means. And ethics, in, in its most simple translation, is the uh, uh, adherence to some uh, very basic rules and principles that are in our laws, in our constitutions, in our you know, uh, foundational elements of our civil societies. Um, we can we can speak for hours, but everybody has got a kind of uh, sense of what ethics uh, means. And, and an ethical use of technology, ethical use of data, like I said before, is becoming paramount. There's not going to be any future if we do not get back in control of our of the technology we use for our lives. On the professional perspective. So this this was why the why from a personal perspective. I believe this is almost uh, has been considered impossible to change technology in the way we want to change it today. So far, it was considered mission impossible. To some extent, I believe it is, and that's part of the challenge. But like I said before, I feel I need it, uh, and I feel many people uh, deserve uh, many people deserve and need it, and and that's why, from a personal perspective, I, I decided to take the endeavor. From a professional perspective, um, I believe that we have to tie the technology, the knowledge, and the awareness, uh, also from the business side, of what it takes to uh, to create a controllable technology, transparent, controllable, interoperable, new generation of technology and data infrastructures in particular. Uh, we know how to do it. We know why this has not been done so far. And also from a European perspective, I believe we have also the, the pride to say that we can do it, despite all the people that believe that Europe cannot fill the gap accumulated with the United States or, or Asia, which is totally wrong, because most of the technologies that nowadays are leading the market have been designed, invented, and patented uh, in Europe. So it's time to wake up from a pro professional perspective. I think we deserve to show what Europe can do, like I said before, for Europe and beyond, because this is not just for Europe. I, 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 I'm strongly committed to repeat this sentence more and more. And from a personal perspective, 
uh, I feel that there's not going to be future without controllable technologies. And I feel I need to make my part in, in, in this, even though it's a very challenging endeavor. Francesco, if you can explain Gaia-X in three words and how is it different from other initiatives for the audience that is not so much aware of Gaia-X, what would we tell them? Like, let's say that we're trying to explain Gaia-X to a grandma. <laughs> what do we say? Yeah. First of all, Gaia-X is an association. It was born like a government, as a governmental project. So it was born as a project from Germany and France to build a new uh, data infrastructure to boost and protect their data economy. But then every country in Europe literally wanted to participate to the project. So uh, what we are today is an international non-for-profit association. So GAIAX is a group of companies representing the world of users of technologies from any sector, from banking to energy to manufacturing, automotive, etc., and uh, providers of technologies, so cloud service providers, telco, telco providers, etc. Why these people are sitting together to build GAIAX, and I will explain what GAIAX is. They are sitting together because they realize, like I said before, that we need a new generation of data infrastructure. Uh, we need a new generation of cloud technology that is controllable. And, con and uh, let me say that everybody talks about digital sovereignty. So GAIAX is building a new generation of cloud that is sovereign, where sovereignty means transparency, controllability, interoperability across technologies. Uh, what does that mean? It, it means that where we, where we put our data, where we put our services, is going to be no more uh, an infrastructure that is run by someone else using their rules, controlled by their people, uh, putting those data where they want, but it will be where we want those data to be put. And those data will be treated according to our rules and will be controlled by the GAIA-X technology. So what are we developing? We are developing a framework. We call it the GAIA-X framework, which is a set of software components that will uh, be devoted to control the characteristics of any service. For, for example, you can think about a cloud service to store your data such that you will be able to see where the service is run by whom uh, what are the components of that of that specific service what are the characteristics in terms of compliance to regulations or to specific certification levels and those characteristics will be controlled by the GAIAX technology will be recorded in a place where everybody can see it such that anybody can uh, will be able to look into catalogs of GAIAX services, being assured of that those services have certain specific characteristics and pick and choose the one they want. This is exactly what you do when you go to the shop and buy a can of food and read the ingredients. And by law, you are entitled to see exactly what are the components the ingredients componing that uh, that food you're going to eat because if you are vegan you want to eat vegan food if you instead want to eat something else you want to know exactly anyway what's inside then you can decide and pick and choose nobody forces you forces you to be vegan and nobody forces you not to use american cloud but we want to make sure that you are entitled uh, you can see transparent, transparently what are the characteristics of the cloud service you are using such that you feel comfortable putting your data into it because you know that that service that is GAIAX compliant will treat your data according to the rules you have defined, will allow uh, people, companies to exchange data one another according to those rules. You are ensured that those rules will be controlled by the GAIAX framework and you will be ensured that any GAIAX service providers will fulfill the rules that we are defining. So it's a simple thing, 
uh, if you think about it, because it belongs to any type of service. It's like, you know, when you put your money in a bank, you do it because you know exactly transparency, transparently the rules that they adopt, but is not yet the case for cloud technologies and in general for uh, data technologies. So what GAIAX is doing is defining a set of rules and translating these rules into a technology framework that will do the job that you should do yourself, investigating, understanding, inspecting the service, and making sure that that service does exactly what uh, what uh, it declares to do and does exactly what you need to do. So long story short, with GAIAX, you will be able to use more reliable technology, more trusted technology, where trust means transparency, so you will be able to see and inspect the characteristics of a service, controllability, so you will be able to pick and choose the one you want, and interoperability, so you will be able to use services that interact one another more than the services that we have today that uh, are very um, have a very little level of interoperability in known at all because their business model is the model of dependency so they do not provide interoperability by design Francesco, please explain something to me uh, would the GAIA-X standard is also a way uh, to move uh, from a more monopolistic way of doing business to actually transferring business impact to more hands? And if this is a yes, how can Gaia-X achieve this? Yeah, this is exactly the case. We, we, we have a, an oligopolism uh, in the sense that we have a few players dominating the market. We have a handful of players uh, in the cloud, for instance. Everybody knows the GAFAM acronym. Uh, but what Kayax is doing is not what some people would expect. Like, for example, we are not forcing uh, any European institution to develop new regulations that will restrict the adoption of uh, non-European technologies. Why? Because we are a totally private association made of totally private uh, uh, subjects and we have no subsidies, no grants, no affiliation of any sort and type with any public institution, being national or being uh, European. Uh, second, we could uh, um, uh, create something that makes basically difficult to use non-European technologies. And um, this is not the case because our technology is is, is completely open. So what we are developing, the GAIAX framework, software framework, framework I was talking about, is totally open source. So anybody will be able to publish their services according to the GAIAX standard, will be able to be inspected, uh, and will be able to be um, utilized as a GAIAX service. So what is the difference? The difference is that the, the, the market of cloud nowadays is oligopolistic, uh, or monopolistic because the model of cloud technology that is being used is meant to lock in users. In other words, you move your data on one specific cloud and then you struggle to move your data out of that cloud because that cloud technology does not help you moving your data out or make your data interoperable with other data, other processes that run in different clouds. Now, this has been the problem for many years, and uh, it, it has been the roadblock by which European companies have not shared their data on the cloud. The level of adoption today of the cloud by European company is below 26%. This is Eurostat data. So the problem is not that we don't have uh, good cloud technology. The problem is that in particular, uh, companies do not trust the existing cloud platforms and keep 80% of their application, 80% of their data on premises or on private cloud. Like it or not, this is the problem. So what we are doing with GAIAX, we are developing a new generation of cloud infrastructure that is, first of all, distributed instead of hyper-concentrated because the cloud model we have today is hyper-concentrated. The cloud model that GAIA-X is promoting is distributed across several nodes. 
Doing this, we are enabling small, medium providers and not just huge ones to join together to create federation of cloud services. And this, of course, will create an alternative in the market. What we are aiming at is leveling of the playing field where not just a few, not just a few uh, providers, but many providers will be able to become uh, visible to create sufficient critical mass of their services and to add on top of the critical mass the added value of transparency, controllability, and interoperability that others do not provide by design. So for sure, what we are doing is going to create an alternative in the market because those players that nowadays don't have an alternative because they are not big enough to compete with the large ones will have a new level of competitivity that is not driven by GAIA-X, but is driven by uh, how the world is changing. In other words, the world of data is distributed and cannot be more any more hyper-concentrated, and we are building a distributed cloud infrastructure. The world of cloud requires a new level of trust that the existing providers don't provide because they are providing uh, their own rules, and instead GAIA-X is providing common rules that are being verified by the technology, and this is what the market wants. The combination of these two factors will enable those players that now are secondary, so not primary players, to become primary player and compete with the primary player. So this will reduce the monopolism or the oligopolism that is now dominating the market. Thank you very much, Francesco. It has been a pleasure having this discussion with you and uh, we would like to engage you, if you may, for our next podcast series, uh, which is going to establish uh, the um, CEO series uh, for this year um, under your leadership as well. We're really happy to to have the opportunity to work with um, leaders that, in fact, um, uh, move hearts and minds. This is quite difficult, especially in the IT sector. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your time today and hope we see you again in our next GAIAX podcast series. Thank you and look forward. <laughs>